today, ladies and gentlemen, I got a long list of my paperwork. Told y'all plenty of stories, and I think I did a video in the past showing some of it, but not the full thing. We're going to show the full everything today on why I went to prison and how long. I've always said I've done eight years, give or take a few, seven and some change or eight and some change. I can't really remember on two certain situations that I went through. And I'll break it down when we get there, but let's get down this dark path. First, let's uh, see all of my charges. And yeah, I have some stuff blacked out because it's personal information and you know it, it'd still be easy to find it i just don't want to blast it you know what i mean if you want to search for it, i'm sure you can find it they're not no particular order as you can see the dates jump around but we got a probation violation second one unlawful wounding third one brandishing a firearm fourth one indecent language they really got me on that one didn't they next one is abduction uh got an assault and battery a grand larceny, violation, violation, probation violation, assault and battery of family, assault and battery of wife. Now keep in mind, look at the dates. They are the exact same. We'll get right back to that here in one second. Don't judge me, man. Okay, we're going to get there, but let's keep it going. Capius, failure to appear violation of probation violation of probation and uh oh this ain't me this is for katie i don't got no kind of meth charges but i don't have no kind of drug charges at all which shocks the hell out of me <laughs> oh man i was riding dirty so much i never got caught that trips me out man thank god for that but that bottom one is definitely for katie and um I guess let's go ahead and start with these two since they're the most important and everyone probably wonders about assault and batter family, assault and batter wife. Even though they're named different, they're both for Brittany. The reason why the name change is because of a pending divorce that was going through filing type divorce. When I got locked up, Brittany's grandparents said in order for her to live with them, they hated me, right? They, her grandparents hated me. And in order for her to live with them, that she had to completely separate from me. I've been married to Brittany for 14 years. So that adds up. You know, we got married about a year before, year and a half before the divorce thing took place. So this was all in the very beginning of our relationship. And I'm not going to lie, man, I was still ripping and running, you know, going to clubs and all kinds of crazy stuff. And not to mention, you know, Brittany had a little party side in her too. So, you know, alcohol and a brand new relationship where people are in love with each other, you know, sometimes there's issues, but it's nothing like y'all might could ever imagine. All right. So I'm in jail. I get the divorce papers. I'll never forget it, man. Uh, the deputy came in with mail you never see a deputy come in and hand out mail the way that this guy did because he's a court deputy he has a walkie talk he has all the court supply stuff on him uh you know you could tell he just came from there and he hands me a piece of paper and that's what it was a divorce man my heart dropped i couldn't believe it i called her immediately and that's when she broke it down what was going on right she was pretty much gonna be homeless if she didn't you know and that's how it goes sometimes with family members but yeah, I wanted to show you this. That is the reason why these are the same, but different names. Okay, so let's go to assault and batter on wife. 716 is the date. Let's see if I can find that. There's so many pieces of paper over here. So as you can see, you've got assault and batter of wife. The trial went through. I pled not guilty and it was dismissed. I wasn't sentenced to nothing. So this assault and battery on wife uh i beat it and this is the assault and battery on family okay which is still Brittany. uh just the name changed because of the divorce it says set for trial i pled not guilty once again set for trial prosecution witness unavailable objection noted and then i was sentenced also i told this story plenty of times Brittany was found guilty at the same time time in the same courtroom we both went to jail for such petty stuff man i'm trying to tell you this is why why you know a lot of people say uh this that and third you can get convictions over nothing especially when it's a commonwealth state but let's 
keep it going, okay? I was sentenced to uh, six months, and they suspended five months, 15 days. So that means I had to do 15 days. And guess what? It's a misdemeanor, so you do half. I had to do a week in jail for this. And it didn't do nothing. I didn't care about the week in jail, but it violated my probation. To be completely 100% honest with y'all, the cops were called to the house so many times, at least three or four different times in our little history moments. Even though I was charged with one, they still came to the house numerous times, right? But this occasion, I believe, it was over spitting in her face right in front of the cops. Some people, when they get mad, all they can do is spit on someone. And that's what I did. And of course, I'm fresh out of prison, so what do you expect? I'm on probation. I'm going to jail, right? Not to mention, we lived in an apartment, my parents' house, which was a condo that was attached to like other houses. It was pretty much apartment complex. But eventually we moved out, and the next two places we stayed at were apartment complexes. So all the way from when she was living with me and my parents, keep in mind, I didn't have nothing. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a license. But Brittany still chose me man you know what i mean it was pretty wild all i had was this meal ticket <laughs> and and a passion to become successful man i've been telling her this i was meant to be something more and i think she loved that about me man that i always looked at things you know at the glass half full always but anyways i had nothing okay she was living with me but we were fighting all the time and we would get super loud man super loud and say some of the nastiest stuff to each other because we would catch each other in lies. That's what it was. In the beginning of the relationship, we were lying to each other. And I was still going out to clubs, going to party. I was gone for a night or two at a time. No, not two. But one night, I'll go out for the night and not come back. You know what I mean? Uh, but Brittany had a lot of friends and she was partying as well. So it wasn't just me. Anyways, uh, you know, we, we were just battling with catching each other in lies and, and trying to be the dominant force because Brittany's a very dominant person. If you can't tell by the Call of Duty streams, but I'm still with her. 14 years strong. Amazing thing. Truly blessed. You know, a lot of bumps in the road, though. And uh, I tell, tell you all this all the time. Just because there's bumps in the road doesn't mean it's over, right? It's about what you do during those times. And, you know, there's a lot of times I thought it was completely over. But, you know, somehow we molded it back together. And it's been a very long time since we had any kind of situations like this. We grew out of this very quickly so yeah we would have these super loud fights man it would get everybody's attention the whole damn neighborhood people come out their house look and see what's going on and eventually the neighbors called the police right so after three times of this type of shit happening someone's gonna end up going to jail we we started seeing the same officers show up to the scene you know like we were just here last month what's going on this time uh, that's how this stuff happens man it, it can escalate very quickly and you can tell by the dates and stuff that uh some of the incidents times are like only a month apart you know even though they were dismissed or she didn't show up to court uh it eventually got to the point where the judge said he's had enough i got found guilty as you can see got seven days and that same exact day uh britney had to go that was my sentencing but she showed up and she had a court date at the same time as me the judge did that on purpose she he he wanted both of us to be going to jail together because of this bull crap that they keep getting the cops caught on us for over petty stuff. Hence the stories that I've told about Brittany going to jail in pink handcuffs and me yelling to her through a vent saying it's gonna be okay. A lot of crazy stuff has happened with me and Brittany. It was never anything major, more along the lines of pure psychotic screaming and the most worst, filthiest, gruesome names you could possibly call each other. Now, as you can see, this is Brittany. Disposition date 7-16-2010. So it says her offense date was 7-9-2010. So they found her in contempt of court for, for laughing at the judge as well as a failure to appear. And they were trying to prove a point that we can't keep getting into these situations. She got sentenced to uh, 10 days. Well, she had to do half, so five, I forgot. So she got two days less than me. Me and Brittany knew the game. We kept getting hemmed up. No one showing up to court. This, that, and the third. They had enough of it, man. That was just the name of the game. And, and it was. It had to be like that, though, because I was on probation. Every time I got into a situation with her, it seemed like 
there was a chance of me going back to prison. When you are in and out their face, uh, they're going to get you sooner or later. But let's keep going down the list, all right? It's going to get crazier here. Probation violation uh 3-12-2010. Okay, let's try to find that one. This is the 3-12-2010 probation violation. And I got to get a pen to write down, or I'll just type it on my phone. How much time exactly I've done, we'll calculate it together. So this was a probation violation. I don't know what it was for, which which charge I violated, but well, it was dismissed, I guess, because I beat some of my charges that I got violated for. So when you, you can get violated for picking up fresh charges, but if you beat them, that violation goes away. It's like <laughs> bingo, win the lotto. And that's what happened with this one, I believe, for it to be dismissed. Like I said, these are not in no particular order. Let's go to unlawful wounding. This is one of the charges that put me on probation uh, and why I went to prison. This was the stabbing. 5-19-2006. This is the sentencing. It says, uh, I pled not guilty. Look at all the continuances. All of them. They weren't on my behalf. This was on the victims. I don't know what the hell they were doing, but they are stringing me along, man. And this is gonna, this is another major thing that I want you to pay attention to. And it is something about my time, all right, the amount of time that I did. But this says I was found guilty, even though I pled not guilty, uh, to three years. I was sentenced to three years and two years suspended. So I had to do a year on that unlawful. Let's type that in one plus, and we'll keep it going. Let's go back to the main list brandishing a firearm uh 10 7 2005 so this is about a year before the unlawful wound and keep in mind all these things were happening at once all right and this is the story that i told y'all where i seen one of my enemies at the mall and when he came out got out the sunroof window i can't remember which one it was but aimed a gun right at him had people running all, all over the place <laughs> <laughs> boy i'll tell you what them pistols give you some power but there's a major difference between brandishing and actually getting caught with the gun i was sentenced to uh zero months and 30 days suspended sentence 20 days okay so i had to do half of that it's a misdemeanor right <laughs> just picture that you can get caught or someone could say you aimed it at you know whatever brandishing but if you get caught with that gun it's changed from that funky 20 days, which I have to do half because it's a misdemeanor. I only had to do 10 days for a brandishing a firearm. But that was my brandishing. Now, if you got caught with a gun straight up, it would have been a felony. And people are, you know, going to prison, mandatory minimums, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Over here in Virginia, I believe it's three. Uh, if you're violent, then it's five. But let's keep on going down the list. Oh, let's add that up. One plus, I'm not even going to add that. We're going to just add the years. I don't care about the days. So let's go to indecent language. I'm not going to that. I was just fine. I was at the ocean front, man. You can't be cursing in front of cops or else they'll hem you up. I'm trying to tell you Virginia's different, man. Fools like, you can't get arrested for you're saying F the police in Virginia Beach. You can't. They'll beat you along the way. Uh, they'd be more mad at you about that than catching you in a grand larceny or something. But let's keep it moving. This is a big deal right here, okay? Abduction. Well, at first, actually, it was, I believe, aggravated abduction. And that carried, what, 20 to life or something like that? And then it got dropped down to a different kind of abduction, which carried, I think, 20. And then it dropped down to another kind of abduction that carried 10, right? So... Uh, a lot of these charges, including that unlawful wounding, that wasn't unlawful wounding at first. It was malicious wounding at first, right? So when I first went to jail, I was on all the souped up charges for my crime, man. I had to go through the court process to get them lowered. And, you know, after the court seen what really happened. And that's the scary part, though. When you first get in, I'll never forget. And I used a line with y'all in the videos all the time. You know, uh, I told someone how much time or what my charges were. And they said, you're not coming out until there's three doors on a microwave. I said, what does that even mean, man? It means you're going straight to the penitentiary until you're about 40 or 50, right? So, uh, yeah, that's what I was facing when I first went in, man. Some very serious stuff. That's why I got those numbers tattooed on me, man, because that is how much time I was facing. I had to rumble in these courtrooms, man. I'm trying to tell you. All right, so 
I pled not guilty. And keep in mind, the unlawful wounding and the abduction were together at one, right? I had some people say that I pulled them out of a car at a stoplight by gun and knife point. <laughs> you know, and unlawful wounding, yeah, I stabbed him with a big ass knife. Uh, so I don't, there were really, these people, my enemies were really trying to send me to prison for the rest of my life, right? It, it's crazy. And they came to my home uh, to, to fight me, strangers. I didn't know any of these guys. I mean, they might have had their own issues to do it, but still, I felt like I, I could defend myself. But the abduction, man, that was complete bogus. It was. Uh, this is what I'm trying to tell you. People can say whatever they want. You'll go straight to him town, man. I fought this shit. Let's do the let's do the math here, okay? I had a bond on the unlawful wounding. The abduction is what kept me with no bond. So, 11 arrest date, 9-10-2005. Trial was dismissed in 2-10-2006, okay? So, that was a whole year that I was in jail for no bond. And guess what? That whole year... My unlawful wounding, I still have bond. So I literally went home for like a week before my unlawful wounding case trial. And then the, I went right back to lockup. But when I got out, uh, they didn't credit that year of time to nothing. I did a year dead time for something I did not do at all. So just know that I got the shit in of the stick a lot of times. But you know what? Uh, I still count my blessings because I was going, I was down a dark, dark path and I didn't get caught doing a lot of the evil, evil stuff that I've done. So I take it as, you know, uh, my, my good Lord above trying to get me on track without getting my boots smoked all the way to the max, you know, but still it was ridiculous because I did a year of dead time and wasn't credited to anything, but it was dismissed, uh, in February 10th, 2006, and man, was I rejoicing that day, y'all. I went home for, like I said, a week or so until I went to the unlawful wound. Let me go back to unlawful wounding sentencing since I was sentenced. Uh, so this is the unlawful wounding, and I went and got locked back up. It was found guilty on 5-19-2006. So I was out on the streets for a couple months. I thought it was a week, but it was a couple months. Uh, I was enjoying my freedom until I had to go right back in there for the for the unlawful wounding that I caught at the same exact time as the abduction. But I had a bond on it. And the bond doesn't get revoked unless you go on to run or the judge says it. You know, I'm going through the court process, got all these charges at once, the majority of them. It was tricky, man. It was tricky, but uh, they did get a conviction out of the unlawful wounding. Like I said, I got a year. Let's move on with the list. Uh, assault and battery. And this is before I even met Brittany. This was in the same time with abduction and unlawful wounding because they all took place the same night because of the rumble at my house. You know, it was all connected. All That whole fight got me like three or four different charges. But I was sentenced to uh, sentence time, 12 months. Suspended sentence, 12 months. Right? I didn't have to do no jail time behind that. None. All right? Because it was bullshit. I should have been found not guilty for everything. Everything, you know? But there was a lot of shit in the game with this court case. Uh, so I was found guilty out of all those bunches of things. Uh, yeah, I was found guilty for assault and battery and unlawful wounding. Now, let's jump back to the list. I'm still only got a year in, you know? I've been getting blessed because... I should never have even gotten these charges, man, to be completely honest. But let's keep it going. Uh, grand larceny. This was such a petty grand larceny. I was still in my stealing days. 8-8-2006. Uh, See, all this stuff was at the... I just kept digging a bigger ditch. But let's go to grand larceny. Okay, this is it. 8-8-2006. So, I was found... I pled not guilty. They sentenced me to five years suspended sentence three years nine months i got more time for a grand larceny and keep in mind the grand larceny was so petty i think i they gave me grand larceny because of a, a phone a key fob 
and two Bush Gardens season pass tickets, man. Look, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was a bunch of girls pulled up to a 7-Eleven near the place that I hung out. And, you know, they, they weren't from around there. So Death jumped in the car and took all their shit, every last bit of it. <laughs> and I was rolling up, man. I was rolling up. I was crazy. I was rolling up. I said, damn, these girls, they probably got a ton of bread. Nice car. 8-8-2006. This was just a few months after my 18th birthday. It's unreal to think that that look costs $518. That's literally how much everything was worth that I took that got me more time than stabbing someone. So I got a year for stabbing someone and it was very brutal stabbing, man. I'm trying to tell y'all, but let's add this up. Let's add this to the calculator. One plus, I got sentenced to five years, three years, nine months suspended. So I had to do a year and three months plus 1.3. So right now, okay, 2.3 years is what I got sentenced to uh, in prison, not including those days. That's how much time my first prison sentence was. That's all of it. Okay. I was put on probation for all of these charges, the grand larceny, the unlawful wounding. And I went to prison for 2.3 years, but don't forget. Okay. I did a year of dead time for the abduction. Even though I beat it, it was not credited towards anything. So 2.3 plus one year, 3.3 years I done did already. Not including, and I could not find this for nothing, my juvie time. Okay, I did time in juvie before all of this, and I was on probation since I was like 13, man. I just turned 13. It was for throwing the apple out the bus and then a couple robberies or breaking and enterings. Uh, and, you know, so I did time before this already in the mix. Uh, but 3.3 is how much I did on the first go round. Now, let's keep it going. Go back to the chart and keep in mind, I got more time for stealing some dusty ass items than I did for stabbing someone, man. It, that's just just goes to show you how, how much of a fluke that whole trial was with all those crimes, man. It was bull crap. I should have beaten all of them. And I shouldn't have never gotten assault on a family member, man. That was bull crap as well. Seven dusty days, man. And they took my old lady with me, man. Treacherous, man. Virginia will trick you up. Let's keep it moving, though. Uh, violation, violation, violation. Another violation and violation. So I got like five violations. Let's go down all the violations here. I got them numbered. This one was dismissed. I can't remember exactly why. I, I must have beat a charge. I think we already talked about this part, but let's go on to violation number two. Uh, I pled not guilty. I'm always pleading not guilty because I was not guilty, man. My probation was revoked. They sentenced me to three years, nine months. Sentence suspended three months, three years, three months. So like I said, my first violation, I got six months. Let's add that. 3.3 3 plus 0.6. 3.9. Now, also keep this in mind, I'm fresh out of prison. This was my first probation violation coming home from prison. So I got out in, what, 2008, the first time. 2010, I was out for like a year and a half, going on two before I violated for the first time. Gave me six months of that time that was over my head. We're at 3.9. Let's go down to violation number three. Okay, this was... 4 25 2013 i got out after doing my six months and i violated again uh this time i pled guilty probably because there I, there was no running from it but they sentenced me to four years nine months that was my sentence and the sentencing suspended was three years so that was another year nine months I had to do on a probation violation okay so let's add that up plus 1.9 we're at 5.8 years now not even including my juvie time that i did uh, well, let's, this is probation violation number four. Uh, this is when I got the six months. This is actually before the last one. I numbered them wrong, but I got another, I told y'all I got violated three times. The second, first violation, six months, second violation, six months. And this is it right here. I was sentenced to five years, three months, sentence suspended four years, nine months. So that means I did six months on my second violation. Let's add 0.6. We're at 6.4 years now, okay? Uh, 
Let's move it along. We got another probation violation right here. 3-12-2010, revocation. Not guilty, I pled, but they didn't give me no time uh, because I was already. they already gave me time for the violation for another charge. They didn't want to give me, like, hit me up with oil me up, double jeopardy, whatever you want to call it. They didn't want to do that to me. They weren't trying to get me like that. But they could have. You know, they could have given me time back on this one as well. Now, let's go back to the list. Uh, we already did those two. Capius, we already done that violation of probation uh, that the kd one is not me let's go down to another honestly i think that's it now i said i was sentenced to eight years give or take a few months but 6.4 is where we're at and this is by uh everything that i can remember not including the juvie which would add probably close to another year give or take a few months eight years you know uh, not to mention all the programming I had to do and crazy ass stuff for probation. Uh, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare, man. For about 20 years of my life, it felt like what, what 12 from about 13 to uh, uh, I can't remember the last day I got out, but it was long. I think it was like 2014 or something like that. It was like 20 years I was stuck in the system, y'all behind pettiest charges you could possibly imagine and the more serious ones that you see on here i hardly got any time for them they smoked my boots on these grand larcenies man don't be stealing in virginia don't be stabbing nobody either i got blessed on those cases because i was innocent they got convictions out of nothing on almost 80 percent of the stuff that you're seeing right now were convictions out of nothing that's why i mean shit especially down to the assault and battery on family Keep in mind, the wife one was dismissed, but the family member one, they're all the same, right? Me and Brittany both went to jail, and we are both still married, you know? We, it was not no type of DVs like most people would think, you know? And that's how it is with a lot of people that might have it, you know? I, when I got locked up, a lot of people might think that they would hide that crime. Nah, there's a ton of people in there with the same exact stuff, man. Virginia's for lovers, baby. Go look at the, the damn emblem got a girl standing i think it's a girl standing on damn dude's chest standing on top of him with a spear man you know they love the lover situations man and i think at one point in the city if you got called for a dv at any given time one of the people in the situation is going to jail regardless yeah i don't know if they changed that that law up or not but i was in the mix of that when it was going down and this is my paperwork. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, honestly, this prison channel uh, YouTuber guy that you know is death. Uh, I did a lot more evil stuff than what this stuff says. You know, oh yeah, I got a grand lar I got a grand larceny in Virginia Beach too. I forgot to add that one up. I'm not. I didn't edit that into the video. I'm not about to go looking for that one. But Virginia Beach, I got to, uh, a grand larceny out there as well. So that's probably adding another six or seven months maybe a year to the sense i can't remember how much time it did in virginia beach jail it might be man it might be over eight years once i add that up you know so i did almost a damn decade man now that i'm starting to really realize it and not to mention a year of straight dead time well the uh y'all kept track of all this and it made sense to y'all especially the ones that's been through the system y'all y'all know what time it is man y'all can read this bull crap for what it is anytime someone gets sentenced for something they get three days for it i know it's bullshit it was a free conviction you know and that was the majority of a lot of stuff that i did but this is me ladies and gentlemen completely out in the open uh hopefully you know a little bit more about me and all of these things that has happened to me i've been told stories and they're still up on my channel stories of all this stuff happening i just never went down the whole paperwork route, you know, but this is it. But one thing's for sure that you'll never ever find on any of these beautiful pieces of paper here is I was a snitch. I don't think so. You ain't gonna find that, you know. Uh, I was solid, man. And the majority of these things that, that happened, almost every, no, all of them, every last one of these, I did solo by myself. Nobody with me straight up one man team and i've been like that since i can remember i mean i had a lot of friends but when it came down to it you know doing dirt and stuff i knew better than to do it i learned at a very young age than to do it with other people because they can't hold their water that's a fact learn that so young 
Thank God for that, man. Or else if I went with some of my homeboys in these situations, I probably would have gotten a lot more time. Tap that like, subscribe, notification bell if you enjoyed yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. We got plenty more content coming your way. Thank <laughs> you.